Hi and welcome to this video about user account control or UAC elevation. So what is elevation anyway? We know that we can take any executable and right click in Explorer for example to launch it elevated because by default what happens in today's Windows systems the UAC feature is enabled which means that when a user logs in even if that user is a true administrator two tokens get created. One of them is the admin token, the one that really represents the powerful user, but then a second token is created called the filter token, which is stripped from all its administrative powers. That's the one being used to create processes normally. And the basic idea is that you don't need to be an administrator to run most applications. If you want to run something like Notepad or Word or Explorer, or things like that, there's no need to be an administrator for most, in most cases. Certain applications do require elevation, either because you need to do that, or in some cases, they just, uh, these applications can't really function properly without elevation. So how do you elevate? There are a few options. One option, which is using the UI in Explorer, is to right-click uh, an executable and use Run as Administrator. And this performs elevation. This pops up a yes-no dialog or the actual dialog that calls for a true administrator to come along if the currently logged on user is not a real administrator, so that that administrator can uh, put their username and password to launch that executable elevated. Another way of doing that, which in fact is the same thing as we'll demonstrate, is calling the shell execute or shell execute ex API with a verb called run as, which is one of the parameters to this API. There's a third option, which is to specify that a particular executable must be launched elevated no matter what. So even if you don't use the right-click approach or anything like that, just simply double-clicking will cause the executable to launch elevated. And you see a little uh, shield icon in Explorer to indicate that fact. The way to do that is to have a manifest. So this is an example of a manifest, and in fact part of a manifest. It's an XML file that can be attached as a resource uh, to an executable. And then uh, one of the things you can specify there has to do with the requested execution level. By default, it's called as invoker, which just means that the new process is going to launch uh, using the same powers as the creating process. But you can write something like this, require administrator, which is the second option. This means that this executable that has this manifest attached to it always has to launch a process with admin privileges, uh, either with a yes, no um, consent elevation or with admin uh, username password if the current user is not a true admin. But it must do that because without it, it can't function properly. There's actually a value in between, which is called highest available. Highest available indicates that if the user currently logged in is a true admin, which means there is the powerful token somewhere, then please ask for elevation. Otherwise, just run as is. This means that an executable can still be useful if even if running not with admin privileges, but it's better to run it with admin privileges if possible. So uh, how does elevation work before I demonstrate this shell execute API? Here's how elevation works. Let's say I'm going to explore as a standard user. Explorer is always running as a standard user with standard user rights. And I right click and say run as administrator. What happens then is that Explorer calls a shell ex uh, or sh sorry, shell execute ex or shall execute APIs with a run as verb, as I'll demonstrate. And that in fact gives a call to a service called the Application Information Service or App Info Service. The App Info Service is the one that launches a helper executable, a helper process running consent.exe that runs at si as system. And that's the one that shows you the appropriate dialogue to see whether you are accepting the elevation and if it's an actual username and password you have to provide, and of course it will also contact LSAS to figure out whether the authentication is successful. And if this is the case, it returns the uh, administrative token back to the app info service. And that's where the app info service calls the create process as user function using that elevated token for that whatever application we're trying to run, such as app.exe, some random application. And then what happens, the new process 
launches with admin privileges running that app.exe. And the last thing that happens to make this easier to understand when looking at various tools is that Explorer is be becomes the parent of app.exe. And when I say Explorer, I mean the original process that issued the elevation so that the app info service, which is always the real creator of the process, is actually bypassed in the sense that it looks like uh, Explorer is the parent of app.exe. This is what we'll see in tools such as Process Explorer. And it makes sense from our perspective as just users. We don't need to know nor care whether the app info service or something else is involved in that elevation. So this reparenting is, is quite unique and it's not happening in other uh, situations uh, by default. So this is what that looks like. Let's take a quick look at uh, what we can do with that. And I want to mention a few details which may not be obvious. So here's one detail. Let's say I'm going to launch WinOBJ. So WinOBJ, it doesn't really matter what WinOBJ, WinOBJ does here. I don't really care about this functionality for this, for the purpose of what we're trying to do here. But I'm just launching WinOBJ, which means it runs with a standard user write. And so certain directors, for example, are completely empty because they don't have enough powers. If I go ahead and look for WinOBJ here, say in uh, Process Explorer, we can see that it has a particular process ID 56828. And one of the options we see in WinOBJ is the ability to run as administrator. So it seems like the process can elevate itself. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So what I get here, of course, is the consent elevation dialog. Here it is. I'm using a certain setting, settings in the UIC settings so that I will be able to see that in my normal desktop for demonstration purposes. By default, it will show on a different desktop, which is not, um, it's not my default desktop, but a different one. I'm going to use yes here and the win object is going to launch, but you'll notice the process ID has changed and the previous process has simply terminated. So one thing that's important to note here is that the process cannot elevate itself because if you could do that, then what would be the point? You can't elevate a process uh, in place. You have to create a new process with that uh, administrative token. And so it looks perhaps like I've elevated the same process, but I actually haven't. So what WinOBJ does, it uh, tries elevation. And if elevation succeeds, it simply terminates the previous instance. So that's one important thing to note. And that's because you cannot change a token uh, within, uh, within the process. So a process attaching to a token, that's the primary token, can just replace it. And that's why you can't elevate in place, which makes a lot of sense because if you could do that, then maybe anyone would be able to do that. So that's one thing to note. Second thing I wanted to mention is this idea of the uh, reparenting. Now, obviously, when we look at this WinOBJ here that has now been uh, created for us, and I look at the parent here, we can see that the parent is Explorer. Uh, well, actually, the parent here is, is shown as something that uh, doesn't exist. So where is that process? You might recognize this process ID as being the old WinOBJ, because that was reparenting to it, but then it terminated so it doesn't exist anymore. But if you just right click in, in for some executable and, and then elevate, then you'll find that the parent is the original process if it's still alive. So here's a quick example of that. Here's a, a notepad. Let's go ahead and uh, elevate notepad by right clicking and doing run as administrator. So here goes. So we can see Notepad comes up, nothing special there. If we go and look for Notepad here in uh, Process Explorer, we'll find that the parent is Explorer. Even though we know that behind the scenes, the app info service was the one that actually created uh, this uh, executable. And by the way, the app info service, we can definitely uh, find it. We can find it uh, just by looking uh, for example, very simply in Task Manager. Task Manager uh, shows us, uh, well, supposed to show us if it's uh, behaving correctly. Uh, we can see services and one of the services is the app info service. That's the one which is running within a standard SVC host. We can see that it's in some SVC host. This is where this, that is. And if you disable this service, for example, then you find that elevation doesn't really work as expected if you really disable it. It will uh, start if it's just being stopped for, for a brief while. So that's another thing I wanted to show. Now, 
the next thing I wanted to mention is what happens when we have uh, two executables that have that are that are running right now so we have separate two separate processes one of them is elevated and one is not so here goes I have these two notepads here one of them is elevated the other one is not and the way to see that one way of seeing that we can see these two notepads here I'm going to double click uh, one of them but even before I do that notice there is a column here called integrity this is something called integrity level that I might explain in a different video and you'll find that the values for uh, these two processes are different the one that is not elevated has a medium integrity level and the one that is elevated has a high integrity level and integrity level is really important which I'll, I'll try to talk about that in a future video if I double click both of these uh, processes to get their properties you can put them side by side here we can at least try so one thing the other thing we can see here is that we can look at the token that is used to create uh, that process or the, the one that is attached as a primary token to the process so going to security tab the security tab is really uh, showing us token information the primary token of the process the tab name security is perhaps not ideal but this is uh, how process explorer shows it and so you'll find that uh, in the list of privileges for example this list is very short this is the one running with standard user rights on the other hand this one is running elevated and you notice the list of privileges is pretty long so it has uh, lots of privileges as you would expect from uh, an administrative user and so even though the user is the same it is my user here running um, or used in both of these processes still the token is different the username is the same but the token is different another way to see that is by looking at the logon session here the logon session you can think of that as like a source of uh, handing out tokens and you can see the values here are different these are different sessions so these tokens are distributed from different sessions so that's something to note and when I say session I mean a logon session it's not the the console session you might be familiar with both of them running in session number one that's the console session um, so they're sharing certain objects such as desktops and window stations and so on but they're running from a different logon sessions which again is a separate a separate concept the other thing I wanted to show is what happens when we try to elevate certain executables for example, if I try to take something like regedit and run it on my system, I'm using just OK here, you notice that I get the elevation dialog. Even though I didn't ask to run regedit as elevated, it's still showing me the elevation dialog. If I go to the Windows directory here and look for regedit, uh, here's regedit, uh, you notice that uh, we have this little uh, maybe not very easy to see let me try to uh, change the view here to something uh, bigger uh, so uh, let's find regedit um, okay let's uh, move it along here's regedit you can see the shield icon right here which, mean, which means that it does require elevation and so the way to do that as I mentioned in the slide is to have an appropriate XML entry in the manifest so let's take a look at that and see what we get so I'm going to use one of my tools, uh, Total PE, but of course you can use other tools that know how to show uh, PE details. So I'm just going to grab uh, this uh, reg edit here and just drag it here. Let's uh, find it. Here goes. Let me drag it here. And as I mentioned, the manifest is a resource. You can see there's a bunch of resources here, like there's icons and, and stuff like that, not very interesting for our purposes. And we also have the manifest. This is the thing we're interested in. And if you look here as part of this uh, manifest, you can see we have here the request execution level, which is in fact highest available. So it's not required administrator, it's actually highest available, which means that if I would run regedit on uh, when, I log, when I log in as a standard user where I don't have admin privileges, it will run directly without asking for elevation. Other executables might still ask for elevations all the time using require administrator. And so there's a few of those you might want to, uh, to look at um, and you can find them uh, in 
in, in various locations in Windows, such as perhaps uh, Task Manager, even though even for Task Manager, I'm not sure that it's actually um, using that because what happens if it's running again when the user is not really an admin, and so what would happen then? It makes sense for it to still run and, uh, and provide some functionality, even though it might not show all processes. So again, we can check it out. And you can see here it also uses highest available, which means it will not elevate um, on uh, in cases where a user logs in and that user is not an administrator on that system. So it's using highest available just like RegEdit. So if an executable can run and have some kind of an effect when uh, running without admin privileges, it's a good idea to do so. But some executables might not be even uh, that. For example, device manager uh, can't run without admin privileges, just can't, because you can't get the hardware information that it needs without running with admin privileges. So if you wanted to do something like this yourself, uh, such as elevate some application, what would that take? So here's a little console application I've written here. And just for fun, we're going to just call shell execute. So you can use shell execute or shell execute ex. And the operation here normally would be something like open, which means I would like to run whatever uh, that thing is or run the associated application. For example, you can provide to this uh, shell execute files like a txt file and it will open notepad and if you provide a docx file it will open word and, and so on so this is a higher level function that calls create process as needed however if we change the verb to run as it will behave differently and so let's say i want to take ms paint here and run it with admin privileges as a very simple example we can specify parameters if we need to there's no need for any parameters here we don't care about the current directory and there is a command show which i'm going to just uh, use its show default again not very interesting for our purposes something very very simple like that that's basically all we need to do in order to elevate something let's see if that uh, compiles and works as we hope so apparently I've missed a parameter here. There's a handle to window, which we don't really need, but we have to specify something for uh, this to be happy, for the compiler to be happy. By the way, the extra squigglies and stuff you see here is because I'm uh, now testing Resharper C++ to see if it uh, works nice enough for my purposes and not being too slow. Uh, so I'm just doing some testing there uh, while I'm at it. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and run this. And you'll notice that I get an elevation prompt here. And since Paint is, uh, is signed by Microsoft, then we see the elevation, the consent elevation for yes, no, with a bluish color. A blue color is a relaxing color in color psychology. So that's used for signed binaries. If the binary wasn't signed, then I would see the orange, yellowish, uh, bright color that uh, maybe hints uh, of a potential danger. So here I'm fine with that and we get uh, paint uh, loaded up with uh, elevation enabled. So if I look for paint, uh, we'll be able to see that uh, paint here, if I can find it. And again, there are several ways of seeing that. One of them is that the integrity level is high. We can also see that the, uh, the, uh, the token here is a powerful one. Um, it has administrator uh, parts. You can see here that uh, the administrators are owners of, of this token. And we can see the many, many privileges that are available here, which is typical of this case. And the same logon session would actually be the one, the same one we've used or seen previously with Notepad. It must be the same one because it is using the same user. So it's the same uh, logon session. So this is it uh, for elevation. These are the basics of elevation. I hope uh, you found uh, this uh, video useful.